Get ready. It's time for a well-deserved break, Pittsburgh, with Heather Abraham and David Highfield. From the KDKA TV studios, it's Pittsburgh Today Live. <laughs> I'm having some technical <laughs> I tried to send Ron a video that was really funny that I think he would appreciate. And the Instagram message filter would not let me just, it wouldn't exit out of the send. And he goes, how many times did you send this to me? Because you I, just kept pressing it. It's not working. <laughs> so I think I hit it like But apparently times. it was working. And now Ron has 17 <laughs> of the videos. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Thursday. Yeah, or Tuesday, it feels like that. Yeah, well, oh no, I need the weekend. <laughs> right. We're not, I'm not, we're not moving backwards, we're moving forwards, Heather. Um, hey, we want to start with something that's classic Pittsburgh. Well, and also with all the snow, we know all too well about this. You know, putting yeah. the parking chair out there, maybe just on a regular basis, or especially if you've shoveled out your spot. Oh yeah, if you've shoveled out a spot, I mean, it is a Pittsburgh tradition. You respect yeah. the parking chair. You respect that yeah. chair. So there's a guy in Chicago uh, who is doing the same thing, only he's doing it with blue jeans. Yes, it's this cold in Chicago. His name is Adam Selzer, uh, and so he started posting this on Twitter. Uh, he says he soaks them, uh, then puts them outside. In about 20 minutes, you can form them into a shape, and then it takes about 20 more minutes for them to really form solid. Uh, but he's able to save a space this way. You know, I think that this is a good time to mention, while we would like to, and, and sometimes do, complain about our weather here. Right. We have nothing on some of these other cities who... Oh, like Minneapolis? Like They're negative. super cold. Not wind chill, like, oh, it's going to be negative 20 with the wind chill. Just negative 20, and then add some more onto it if there is a wind chill. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so, yeah. you know. So you have found the silver lining for all of us in this winter that just won't end. Heather. So don't complain, <laughs> although I will continue. It's in my uh, nature. Today is an important day. It's an anniversary date. I know. I. I Do you remember this date? I don't. I mean, okay. I, I, okay, here. So 20 years ago was the implosion of Three Rivers Stadium. I was in 11th grade. All right, and you weren't paying attention. Because I, I, I just. Actually, I was a senior. I was a senior. Yeah, so I was too self-involved to care I, about I, anything. I was 10 years in of working at KDKA, uh, but I was not working this morning. I was watching that that morning. I was I was watching from home, and we just wanted to dig out the video because there's nothing like implosion video. Right. Bill, like you can't turn away from Three, three River Stadium being imploded. Uh, so I asked David, "What do you remember about oh, that?" No. And wait, oh, no, no, you have to tell folks at home because no. they may remember too. What do you remember? He was watching at home. Oh, I don't want to get Ken Rice mad at me. Hey, there's no, does Ken okay. Rice get mad? I don't even know if that's possible. What do, All right, what so do you remember? Here's what I remember. So I remember people were gathered at point, on the Point State Park side uh -huh. of the river to watch the implosion. Uh -huh. And that is where I believe our Ken Rice was, was anchoring the coverage outside. Uh -huh. and, and he had a hat on, and it appeared that the hat was a beret. A beret. And so I thought, Ken Rice is wearing a beret. <laughs> And, and so I remember, like, uh, yes, Running I, out and purchasing I, a beret. No, I didn't. But <laughs> I, I mean, he's a trendsetter, so that very easily could have started a trend. Uh, so I don't know if it was truly a beret or not. And I, I never asked Ken. Uh, you should text but him. somehow it came up this morning, like, you asked me, what do you remember about that morning? I think Ken Rice had a beret on. <laughs> that was the first, a massive building was imploded, and that's what he remembered. Ken Rice was wearing a beret. And Ken Rice can pull anything off. So if he was wearing a beret, I mean, he looked great, but it, it looked like he was wearing a beret. And that's what I remember 20 years later. Ron is laughing. Ron, why are you giggling? I just, I don't believe that Ken Rice was wearing a beret. Like, <laughs> I just, I, I don't see the story as actually happening. Okay. All right, well We're then maybe, have, we, need to, we need to go down into the archive room in the basement of yeah, there's evidence. and see if we can find video. We found the video of the implosion. Let's see if we can mm. find video of the live coverage. I know our special assignments producer, Corey Martin, would know. I, he I probably believe wouldn't he know. Is Corey watching? Corey, text us. Text if you can us confirm the beret. Or Ken, if you're watching, yeah. text us and let us know if you indeed had a beret on. Corey I, would remember if it was like a Thursday, 
you know, he would re he oh, remember I know. so he remembers specifics. all those details like yeah. Yeah. Ron, what were you going to say? I'm, I'm calling shenanigans and I think that we should put up a Snickers bar. I will give you, David, a Snickers bar if this actually happened. All We're right. going to get to the bottom of this. We will tell <laughs> you before on. the hour is over. We that promise is you. Are we, we going to get the answer before the hour is over? I'm on it. All right. I'm getting ready for my Snickers bar. I'm on, on. it. I'm on it. The vending machine, you better make a run. Mm. All right. Where can we go from now? Um, like from here. <laughs> well, we're supposed to talk about runaway cows. Right. I'm thinking that's what we should talk about. Uh, so uh, we just want to set up what you're about to see. Dozens and dozens of cows <laughs> parading down a highway. Just listen. You can hear them galloping. You can hear them galloping. They're in a hurry wherever they're going. Uh, we don't know where they're going, uh, but this was a highway in the state of Indiana, and one woman who was driving along or was in the passenger seat or whatever, uh, I mean, all the cars are stopped. She grabs her cell phone, started shooting the video. Uh, we're not sure how the cows got loose, but she found it amusing. Uh, people just could not believe what they were seeing. So listen to what she was saying as she took this video. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I got loose somehow. Oh my gosh, Noah, this is fabulous. It, I mean, it was dozens and dozens of cows. I, I, you, you said that maybe it would be a little frightening because they're big animals, well, but yes, they seem to be minding their own business. They're massive animals. And they're I staying mean, in the other lane for the most part. You know, I get this though. I, I feel like a cow these days has one or two options, you know, one of two options. So, what do you mean? Like the run either, or the other option? Well, they're either at a dairy farm or somewhere else, you know? Oh, there's that, yeah. So uh, run, we, run! We, we, no, we <laughs> should say police, volunteer firefighters, and the cow's owners all came together, rounded them all up. I don't know how you get that many cows rounded up at that point, but no mm -hmm. animals got hurt, no people got hurt. It was just a parade of cows. Yeah, okay. Well, from that to this, how about <laughs> This is so misleading. How about hugging a cow for Valentine's Day? But this is virtually, so you're not it's even virtually, so you're hugging. imagining it. But it's kind of a cute thing that, that Stonyfield, uh, the company Stonyfield, the uh -huh. organic yogurt maker, came up with. So they're willing to set you up with a cow date uh, for Valentine's Day. Uh, and it is virtual, that's the one thing, but cow hugging is like this new wellness trend. Like sure. they're supposed to be, you know, well-natured and the warm body temperature is supposed to calm you. Uh -huh. So apparently they send you some like strawberry yogurt and some chocolate milk kind of stuff uh, if you sign up for this. They also send you a stuffed cow so to that you can actually, home. to cuddle at home. But uh, the package includes a 15 minute Zoom with a cow. And what do you do? What, what do you do with the cow? What's well, I don't know. I mean, I guess you just. <laughs> I don't. On the Zoom. Good, I just said the Zoom. No, you're picking up my, my <laughs> bad habits. No, I don't know. That's a good question. So what you do you do? you just stare at each other on the screen? I don't know. Well, they did send some video, and I, I don't know if we have the actual video of the cows. Uh, because, oh, here it is. So, so is this, this <laughs> these are the adorable cows that you could spend Valentine's Day with. For 15 minutes. For 15 minutes. It costs $50. But here's the thing. They're raising money. Uh, it is going to go to a group that okay. is helping organic dairy right. farmers. You can schedule your date. Um, and who knows? Maybe it'll, it'll take off. Okay. So it's more about supporting the charity and the good cause than it is about the actual date. Because let's face it. What do you... Well, hello, Mr. <laughs> Cow. How are you today? And then somebody walks know. in the I mean, room and you're like, I swear I'm not crazy. I'm just on my cow date I, I'm on right my now. Cow date. Yeah, okay, that might be a bad thing if someone <laughs> walks in the room right at that moment. Uh, but cow hugging is actually a thing. As you may remember back in November, uh, we showed you a video of this ranch you can go to, this animal sanctuary in Arizona, uh, where they schedule time. Uh, this is Amy's Farm Sanctuary, uh, and you can just spend some sort of meditative time there with a cow. And it, it actually, it is so popular that they are all booked up. Their sessions They're, are all booked really? up. I, yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't mind spending some time with a cow because I've never done that before. And they seem like gentle creatures, you know? Yeah, well, that's why it's popular. Right. All right, we're, we're going to move. We're going to stick with animals for a little bit and show you one more thing that caught our attention that we just thought was kind of cute. So yeah. uh, we're talking about a koala bear 
in this need of crazy. rescue. Yeah, stuck in a car, but. Wait, well, they, this, this, this is the thing. It looks like it's going to drive the car. It does. Which... <laughs> so, okay, so this, this koala got stuck on a six lane freeway and mm. caused a five car pileup in southern Australia. So, not so cute and innocent. No, just the cute well, part. Yeah, I mean, he didn't mean to do it. Uh -huh. uh, but anyway, a woman rescued uh, that cow. No one was hurt in the accident. Uh, that cow. That koala. We've been talking it's about still, cows still way still too long. long. What, which animal is which? Uh, and then put the koala, because she didn't know what else to do with it, in the car. And then the koala is like going, examining every inch of the car, sniffing at things, scratching at stuff. Uh, you know, it's its new little playground until they were able to get animal rescuers there who then released it far away from the freeway. So yeah, oh it is God. safe, but but look at it. it. It's probably never been in a car before. I would probably do the same thing and job well done to that woman. But the only thing I can think of right now watching this is, oh, that thing is scratching up her car. I, know, I thought that too. Right? You can like hear the Like if she had nails. leather seats, I don't think she does mm. based on that video. But can you yeah. submit that to your insurance? Yes. <laughs> I rescued her. <laughs> I rescued a koala to damage the inside of I'm my vehicle. I'm thinking you have to have very good insurance for them to cover that. Yeah. yeah. All right, so normally on PTL, we don't talk politics. We avoid mm -hmm. it. We, we're not trying to start any fights here. But the Bernie mm -hmm. Sanders memes have transcended politics. And we have to tell you about these two local businesses who have caught on to the whole thing. Yeah, so uh, there's a tie-in. But first, first we're going to show you. If you don't remember the meme, uh -huh. we even fell into this. We used, you know, Bernie from the inauguration in his mitten, sitting in the chair, looking sort of not so excited. <laughs> and so we put so him funny. in the PTL studio. And, you know, at this point, I think people are maybe a little tired of seeing the memes. However, two local businesses, as Heather mentioned, are involved in this. And there is one business, and I love this story. The Post-Gazette did a story on this couple. A local couple have a business called Berry Good Embroidery. Uh, <laughs> and the one guy's last name is Barry, so that's why. But look at what they're making. They are selling sweatshirts and t-shirts and hats and masks with Bernie embroidered on them. So I mean, I, this is really cute. It, it, yeah, well, this is like where you would normally see like a logo or something on the exactly. on the chart. Yeah. Really and and also I love the story of their business. I love businesses like this. So they had a different business and it came crashing down last year because of the pandemic Aww. and they literally did not know what they were going to do. They go to Joanne Fabrics, they buy some fabrics, they start making masks and uh, they also uh, bought a sewing machine and watched YouTube videos to learn how to do the embroidery. That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, well, and we'll just quickly tell you Commonwealth Press also did something too along the same line. They said, don't buy this. They put up this poster that you could put in your yard and they sold out. Yeah, they sold out and they and they also shared all the, the proceeds or some of the proceeds with charities yeah. and both those groups are doing that. So that's a good thing, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Tomorrow's Friday and that means we're going to take your questions for our Friday free for all. You will see this up on our Pittsburgh Today live Facebook page. Make sure to give us a like and follow us there and also submit your questions. We'll get to as many of them as possible tomorrow. All right. But first today we have a whole show to get to and we have a lot to get mm -hmm. to starting with a little love bird trivia just one of the things you can do this valentine's weekend sean collier is here with more on that and his other picks for what's happening around town and if you are a lover of thrills you'll want to see the valentine's fear fest selena pompietti found for us she takes us behind the scenes with the fear fest creator ahead i'm not so sure about that okay. one but we'll see all right plus how to make a good impression on a first date and other matters of the heart with etiquette expert liz aquino who also weighs in on how to date in your silver years it's february 11th 2021 thanks for being with us on this ptl this chilly thursday this ptl we say <laughs> let doing love it again. <laughs> and ptl keep you warm we'll be right back with sean's weekend guide after this